Matrices can be in two special forms. We have row echelon form, abbreviated REF, and then reduced row echelon form, abbreviated RREF. And so in this video, we're going to go through the different criteria of each form so that we can um, be able to look at a matrix and identify if it's in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or neither. Uh, before I go through the criteria of each form, I have to define uh, a special key term, which is pivot. So what does a pivot mean? Um, if you look at a matrix, some example matrix like this, you look and see, okay, this has four entries, but some of them are special entries. And we call those special entries pivots. And what makes them special is that they are the first non-zero entry in each row. Okay, so in this example matrix, you go to the first row, and what's the first non-zero entry going from left to right? It's this one. And then in the second row, the first non-zero entry is the three. So these are your two pivots for this example matrix. Okay, that's a really important key term, and it comes up in the criteria. So now let's go through those criteria. So if a matrix is to be in row echelon form, it has to meet these three conditions. Okay, the first condition is that the pivots go top left of the matrix to bottom right. So in this example matrix here, it satisfies that condition because they go top left to bottom right. When would they not satisfy this? If you had a matrix that looks like this, right? Because then, because then here are your two pivots, the first non-zero entry in each row going from left to right. And then the, they go like top right to bottom left, or you could say bottom left to top right. So this does not satisfy the first condition. The second condition is you need to have zeros below each of your pivots, right? So up here, you have this one. So let me redraw this. One, two, zero, three. You identify your pivots. Here they are. And you look at each one and you say, are there zeros below each pivot? In the first case, you have a one and there's zeros below it. In the second case, there are no entries below the three. Um, and in which case you just say, yeah, there are zeros below. You just pretend you just say, yes, there are zeros below this three. Uh, if you had a matrix like this, one, two, three, four, in this example, here are your two pivots. And you look at this first one, the pivot one, and then there are not, there are not zeros below it. And so it does not satisfy criteria number two. This is not in row echelon form. Neither is this. Okay, then the third one is if you have any row of all zeros, then it has to be at the very bottom of the matrix. So any row of all zeros must be at the bottom. And uh, that makes enough sense just like that. But one thing I do want to bring up, if you had something with two rows of all zeros, like this matrix, right? This would not satisfy the third condition because if you have multiple rows of all zeros, they have to all be at the bottom, right? So you would have to switch rows one and two for this to be in row echelon form. So as it is, this does not satisfy condition three. Okay, that's row echelon form. Now reduced row echelon form, its criteria is just a little bit more stringent, um, but again, it's just three conditions. The first one, though, is that if a matrix is to be in reduced row echelon form, first it has to be in row echelon form. And so I could have repeated all three of these criteria up here, but instead you can just say the first criteria has got to be in row echelon form first. And then like additionally to that, the second criteria is you need to have all pivots equal to 1. Okay. Then the third one, um, you have to have zeros above each pivot, right? In row echelon form, you needed zeros below each pivot. And now for reduced row echelon form, you need zeros above them as well. So equivalently, equivalently you could say um, pivots are only non-zero entry in each column. Do you see? Okay, so that's the criteria. So now to make this make more sense, let's do some example problems. So 
So here's a matrix. 1, 0, 0, negative 4, 0, 0, 1, 3, and then a row of all zeros. And so we're asked to determine if this matrix is in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form or neither. And so the first step to solve any of these problems is you go through each row and you find the pivot. So here's the first non-zero entry and pivot in row one. So that's the first pivot. And in the second row, here's your first non-zero entry. So that's your second pivot. Then the third row doesn't have a pivot, right? It's all zeros and that's totally fine. So now we say there are pivots. Now are there zeros below each pivot? Yes. And then we say, did the pivots go top left to bottom right? Yes. Okay, it meets all three conditions. Oh wait, the, sorry, the third one, we have a row of all zeros and it's at the bottom. So perfect. So it meets all three conditions for row echelon form. So we can say this is in row echelon form. What about reduced row echelon form? Now the pivots have to equal one, and they do in this case, and you need zeros above each pivot. So this, this pivot here has zeros above it, and this pivot doesn't have any entries above it, so you just say yes, there are zeros above it too. So this is also in reduced row echelon form. Perfect. Moving on, here's another example. Um, we have 1, negative 3, 0, 2. And in this matrix, first thing, again, as always, identify your pivots. Here they are. Are there zeros below each pivot? This one has zeros below it. Below it. This one doesn't have any entries, so yes. And then the pivots go top left to bottom right. And there are no row of all zeros, so we're good there. So this satisfies all three conditions. The row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form, it's pretty quick to see the pivots aren't equal to 1. So it's not in reduced row echelon form. But also, there aren't zeros above each pivot as well, because this 2 has a negative 3 above it. So this is only in row echelon form. Okay, moving on. We have this one. And we say, is it REF, R, REF, or neither? So first things first, identify your pivots. And then you say, are there zeros below each one? Yes. Do they go top left to bottom right? Yes. There's a row of all zeros, but it's at the bottom. So we're good. Row echelon form. Okay, and then you say, are the pivots all equal to one? Yes, they are. Are there zeros above each pivot? Yes. So it's also in reduced row echelon form. So you can see as you practice each step, or as you practice these problems, you can get quicker at it. As you memorize the criteria, it becomes much faster. The one thing about this that I want to point out, though, is that there's this column of all zeros. Don't let that trip you up, because there's nothing in the criteria about a column of all zeros. If you see one, it could be in any column, and that doesn't matter. Okay, the next example problem looks like this. And you identify your pivots. And then you say, are there zeros below each pivot? And then right away you see no, because this pivot here has a one below it. So it's neither, and then you move on, on a test, right? Pretty quick. Now if you have this matrix and you want it to be in row echelon form, what's the only thing holding it back? Is this, this one here in the bottom right because then it satisfies everything else. Their pivots go top left to bottom right. And then if you got rid of that one, then the row of all zeros is at the bottom. So this matrix is in row echelon form. Okay, and then how would you go from row echelon form to reduced row echelon form? Well, the only thing holding it back from reduced row echelon form is this two right here. So you'd have to get rid of the two. And so if you had a matrix like this, then this is also in reduced row echelon form. And so in the next video, we're going to talk about row operations and how you quote unquote get rid of that two um, and like get rid of this one up here. So that's in the next video. Okay, but now let's do some challenge problems. Okay, these trip some people up. Um, let's see if we can solve them. So we're given this two by two zero matrix. So the question is, just like all the others, is this in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form? And to solve this, you just got to go through each criteria. And it's kind of hand wavy, but uh, it does meet all of the criteria for reduced row echelon form even. So like the first criteria, do the pivots um, go top left to bottom right? Well, there aren't any pivots. And so you just say yes. And then all the criteria that have to do with pivots, it meets them because there are no pivots. So like, are there zeros below each pivot? Yeah, you can say so, just because there are no pivots. Um, and then also the one with the row of all zeros. Yeah, they're as far to the bottom of the matrix as they can be because everything is a row of all zeros. So hopefully that makes sense. So the zero matrix is in reduced row echelon form. What about this matrix? Um, 
three, two, one. It's a one by three matrix. So we follow our procedure. You identify your pivot. So first non-zero entry in the row. And then you say, are there zeros below it? Yes. Do they go top left to bottom right? Yeah, there's only one. Um, are there, and there's not a row of all zeros. So this is in row echelon form. What about reduced row echelon form? Well, the pivot isn't equal to zero. So it's not in reduced row echelon form. But it is in row echelon form. Sorry, the pivot isn't equal to one. That's what I meant to say. Okay, next one, we have a one by one matrix, which is just negative one. And so what do you think? Well, you identify your pivot, it's just the only entry. And then are there zeros below it? Yeah. This, the pivots go top left to bottom right? Yeah. There's no row of all zeros. It's in row echelon form. But the pivot isn't equal to one. So it's not in reduced row echelon form. But Alternatively, if you had this matrix, which is just comprised of one entry and it's the number one, then you would say this is in reduced row echelon form because it meets all those criteria. Okay, last example problem or last challenge problem. You have this matrix. It's a two by one matrix, which looks like a vector, right? Vectors are matrices. And uh, you identify your pivot. So here's the only pivot. Are there zeros below it? Yes. Do they go top left to bottom right? The pivots? Yeah, they do. There's only one. Um, but then it's that third criteria that it doesn't meet, which the row of all zeros has to be on the bottom. And this single zero doesn't look much of a row, doesn't look much like a row, but it is a row at the end of the day, right? So it's got to be at the very bottom if it's going to be in row echelon form. So this is neither. And if you wanted a matrix that looks similar to it, that was in row echelon form, it'd be this. Right? And the pivot's equal to one and there's zeros above it. Right, you can say so it's also in reduced row echelon form. 